Be terrific. Official coverage of CES 2017. Welcome back to your live continuing coverage of CES 2017 here in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Las Vegas Convention Center. We are having a lot of fun here. It's just, it's almost too much fun. Uh, we're right above Samsung's booth. It's super loud up here. I don't even know if you can hear that, but I imagine these microphones isolate pretty well. I, uh, I have our next guest here and I'm very excited about it, but Jenny's in the chat room loving that new Segway, wants Jason to send him one in <laughs> Finland. That was uh, pretty cool. I like that myself. I know Jason wants to use that as a Steadicam rig. I'm sure. He's, he's, he hasn't stopped talking about it since we saw it the other day. This gentleman's from InnoViz, and uh, this is the InnoViz One. This is a really cool uh, product. This is uh, a sensor right. that you would have in an autonomous vehicle, and I love that we're getting to see that tech. Uh, this helps the autonomous vehicle see. It's like the eyes for the autonomous vehicle. Right. Did, did I set that up well? Yeah, that's pretty pretty correct, pretty All exact. Right, well, thanks for coming. Yeah, nice <laughs> yeah. to see you, Oren. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah, this is a great opportunity to be here on CES and uh, show our technology for the first time. We're a very young startup. We just uh, uh, came to be uh, one year ago and we're already uh, uh, displaying here our uh, new technology with uh, Magna International. So it's uh, great being here. And uh, what we've developed is a solid state LiDAR for autonomous vehicles. Now autonomous vehicles, you know, they're going to be what we're going to uh, dri be driving in in a few years. Autonomous vehicles need. Wait, are we going to be driving them, or they're going to be driving us? I'm not <laughs> sure. Right, we're going to to be traveling in them. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, riding in them. Exactly. So uh, they need to see where they're going. Yeah. And today's sensors just don't give this uh, enough information. You know what's amazing? This is exactly <laughs> like how the Predator saw. <laughs> It's exactly how the predators look. Get to the chopper. <laughs> All right. yeah, so I don't know if, if, if uh, you can see exactly what's going on here, but what you see is a video taken from our own booth right here at Magna International's booth. Wow. And you can see people walking around, uh, waving their hands uh, to a pretty long distance of like 50 meters is uh, what you can see right here. And this is the sensor that we're, that we're making that creates a 3D image, a very high density, high resolution, long range image image of everything that's around the car. It's very, very cool. I mean, I don't think if that was what I saw out of my windshield, I'd be able to navigate very well. <laughs> but I think that for a car to be able to interpret that through an AI system and computers uh, is, is phenomenal. So basically, you guys sell the camera in the system. You're OEMing it for car manufacturers. They integrate it with their AI. Correct. And uh, you know, they make it work with their car. How, I mean, everybody's worried about how safe this is. You know, I, I have a lot of faith in this technology. You know, people worry about it getting hacked and all that, fine. But how safe is it as far as really driving? I think it's pretty safe, aside from the kind of fear of being hacked. I mean, because you have to realize that there are accidents with cars in general. There are accidents with autonomous cars. There are always going to be those things. I don't think we're ever going to weed out all accidents. I don't think you're ever going to say, well, the car's going to drive me and there'll never be an accident. People have to get that through their mind, kind of. And I mean, think about a plane, right? I think people don't want to give up control in the car, but think about a plane. Mm -hmm. You're not in control in a plane, a bus, a train. Right. Somebody else is. So it's really no different, except the thing that's controlling it is a computer, which in theory should be smarter or it certainly we don't have to worry about it falling asleep. Right. At least right. I hope right. sometimes my Mac goes to sleep when I don't want it to. <laughs> um, we don't have to worry about it, uh, you know, missing uh, a, a highway, you know, an exit because it was, uh, you know, distracted Too tired talking or to drunk somebody. Or yeah. My only thing with what you just said there is planes, trains are all, every, every one of them is the same. They're all being run by the same system. When you have an autonomous car, you also have the human car. So I think if they were all autonomous cars, it'd be a different story than if there was a human, you know what I mean? Right. And that's, that's where this is trying to help avoid the issue or the mistake by a human, right? right? So, so there's going to be a transitionary period where, where autonomous cars are going to be uh, using the same roads together with human drivers. Right. And for that uh, duration, they need to be uh, very aware of their surroundings to, to have a very good perception. Mm -hmm. And for that, you need to have very good sensors uh, that give them uh, the complete, you know, image of, of what, what's oh, around what's them. What's happening? Other, otherwise, they just they can make mistakes, and you know, people make mistakes too. You got oh, you know, exactly. optical illusions. So, you know, uh, you, you miss uh, you know a street sign or a, or um, on your phone traffic light. Exactly, and this doesn't happen to uh, to machines. Uh, when you got the right sensors, you can see everything. 
You know, uh, I, I think you're right. It's all about the right sensors, the right technology, figuring out the right system. Obviously, there will be an integration, but I don't think that there's ever going to be a time, at least I hope not, because I love driving, where we don't see humans drive. I, I don't want to drive all the time, but I'd like to drive sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'd certainly like to get in like a Porsche or a Ferrari <laughs> and take it for a spin. I don't want to yeah. be like, ah, let's have the computer drive Let them drive, drive me, yeah. yeah. Have um, either of you been in an autonomous car? I have not yet. I, I am chomping at the yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't, I don't, no, I don't want to be in one now. And I'll tell you why. Because once I get in one, I'll never want to get out of one. Really? So I kind of want to wait until <laughs> I can actually have one. Uh -huh. uh, because here's my thing. I'm all about productivity and efficiency and making my life easier. There's so much wasted time for me. I, I spend hours every day in my car. Mm -hmm. You know, I live in the New York metro area. Hours upon hours. I could be sleeping and catching up on sleep. I could be working and catching up on right. work. I could be doing uh, all sorts of things, including spending quality time with my son, even though we're traveling in a car. Right. And it could be FaceTime, looking at each other, having a conversation, Instead as opposed of distraction to, what, what's up, Jack? Yep. What'd you say? Oh, you know, the ride to school would be a lot better. Right. Or maybe I wouldn't even have to take them to school. It could go. They can go <laughs> and get take themselves in the car. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, it's, it's going to have tremendous implications on the society. You know, yeah. autonomous cars. You're going to have so much free time. Uh, people are going to be able, you know, to to live a farther distance from where they work because uh, travel, you know, commute time is is a non-issue. Right. So it's going to dramatically affect the world. So now let's think about the things we want in the autonomous vehicle. Uh, like maybe a Murphy bed would be good for me, <laughs> or a pull-out couch. I mean, why are we designing them as cars? Why don't we think about how we should really reinvent the way they're designed? Is that is that novel? Did I just think of that? So I think that people just uh, are having a hard time like wrapping their heads around their minds about what this could look like in the future. Right. So since, since I was a kid, I, yeah. I went to a place called Ultrasmith in New York City that doesn't exist anymore, and they used to modify cars, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, car stereos and stuff. And back then, they would do bulletproof vehicles for, like, Spielberg and stuff, and they yeah. basically make, like, home offices, LL Cool J, and I get to see these vehicles. And I, even back then, dreamed of having this office on wheels that had reclining seats that I could, I could like, take a nap, work, do my work. Yep. And you think of it, I wanted to make that our studio. I mean, imagine we could like literally travel and be broadcasting live and just be like broadcasting. When we get there, we get there, and, yeah. and we we could do a show and get some sleep, do some work. I mean, right? It's Incredible. unbelievable. Yeah. Right. I mean, in, in, in enough enough time, cars are not going to be to look like cars anymore. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. They, they you don't probably don't need even to have windows. You know, it's going to be a pod. You're going to feel like you're sitting in you know, a room. A train, and you yes. can do whatever, whatever you uh, want to do at uh, this uh, free time that you've now got. A car with no windows. I might like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you know, but seriously, uh, you're right. I mean, I, I mean, I think people would want windows, but I, I imagine it being those windows you can frost electronically. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. So people can't see in. But then when you want to see out, you can see out. You'll probably be surrounded by, you know, big screens that, you know, Surround your entire. Um, I'm thinking every car would be like an airstream. Like an airstream. Yeah. I was picturing that when you started <laughs> saying that. Why not? Yeah. yeah. With I the mean, right. it, what's the difference if it's driving for me? I don't need to worry about how it handles and stuff right. like that. Right. Right. Just get there. So this is <laughs> this is called level five autonomy. A level five autonomy for a car means that you don't need any any involvement of the driver. Mm. You don't even need to have a steering wheel. I don't even need to be there. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, I've already got yeah. my name picked out for my car. Yeah, what's going to be? It's going to be Alfred. Alfred. Yeah, because uh, Batman's butler That's was Alfred. Awesome. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. I'm going to go get an Alfred, and we're going to go. Alfred nice. and I are going to go take name. a drive. That's yeah. a good name. Alfred's going to drive me wherever I need to go. <laughs> I love. Isn't that good? It is. It is. Thank you. It's either that or the who you, you remember the original uh, the original Dudley Moore movie where he was uh, Arthur. Yeah. What was that butler's name? That's the other one too. I'll alert the media. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm I'm sticking with Alfred. Uh, so, how so? I mean, is this how far out is this? Are you selling this and putting this in cars today? And thank you for giving us a look at what the cars are seeing. I mean, obviously, sure. I imagine a lot of the systems are out there are very similar. There are a lot right. out there, right? Um, so. Uh, is this on the market today for, for car manufacturers? So right now it's still a prototype yeah. that we're just showing for the first time mm. now. But in a, in a about six months, we're going to be uh, providing engineering samples you know, to OEMs, to car manufacturers who want to try and test it and evaluate it. 
and within a year and a half, we're going to have it ready for mass production. So let's say I own a car right now. Should I sell that car and start leasing so that when, uh, when a, <laughs> you know, my car doesn't get devalued when everybody's using autonomous vehicles? Right. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know how fast it's going, going to be. Probably the, the first fully autonomous cars yeah. on the market are probably going to appear around 2020. I was going to say 20. uh, when? Yeah. 2020. Or 2020. 2020, that's only yeah. three years away. That, yeah. I'm that's ready. Good. That's enough time to, to buy a car, sell a car, and that's then get an autonomous one. I, I would be a seller right now. <laughs> I, I should be like Jim Cramer. That's a sell market, sell. <laughs> All right. Uh, so can, do you think that there's going to be a time where I can buy, you know, like I can go and buy a uh, new stereo system for my car. I can buy mm -hmm. wheels. I can even put a backup camera in if I want. Do you think I could go to Pep Boys at some point in the future mm -hmm. and, and buy one of these things? And, and put it in my car, like five of these things, and kind of drill a couple of holes, put it in my car, take a wiring yeah. harness, throw a supercomputer in there, and sit in the back seat of the car I've already purchased? Well, you could try. But, <laughs> mo but I, I, most, most chances it's not going to work because it's a, it's a difficult process you know, of integrating, of, of redesigning right. the whole car around those uh, systems. Uh, but you know, you probably won't even have to own your own car. I mean, the, today, no, like, no, 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 I, I want to own my own car. <laughs> you want to <laughs> own it? Now we're making a city bike? No, 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 no. I want to own my car. I don't want other people in my car. No, you, you can own a, you know, a car just as a hobby. You know, like people keep horses what do you mean today. It's a hobby? People, people still ride horses just not to work. I already told to. you I want the Porsche and the Ferrari still. Right. No, I, I, but I, you're saying just rent the car when I need it like it's an going Uber? To be, it's going to be mobility as a service. So you just can you know, click a button on your iPad and a car is going to like be waiting Uber, for you. Yeah, exactly, but Uber. without a driver. Right. Oh my, buy stock in Uber. Amazing. Bye, bye, bye! Seriously. Uh, oh my God, <laughs> I yeah. mean, seriously. Are yeah. you serious? I I, I'm uh, dead this. serious, yeah. So does InnoViz do anything else, or are they just working on sensors right now? So first of all, we're, we're developing, we've developed this uh, sensor that's, mm -hmm. that's been pretty hard because there's nothing like it yeah. today. On no, the no, what, no what sensor. separates it? What separates this? Yeah. Well, uh, now, first of all, can I ask you something? This doesn't yeah. look like a locking connection. It looks like it'd be very easy for a, you to hit a bump and it pop out. Can we? Can we oh, get this like, is a standard automotive connector. Yeah, oh, it is. Yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, okay. It locks. So uh, the special you thing know how about many cars it. Cars I've wired now. Yeah. <laughs> So you can you can find you can find lidars today yeah. sensors mounted on cars on like you know Google's cars those big clunky uh, yeah. bucket like things. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah. is what it looks like today. Only it's very very expensive, and it, it's a pretty low performance. So what we developed is very high performance, long range, high resolution, and it's tiny. It's tiny, so yeah. it can fit anywhere around the car, and uh, you can make it in mass mass uh, volume, which is what you need. How did you do that? Well, we've got a super, super talented, experienced uh, team of engineers. We're about 40 engineers at the moment. And I think we've, we've really done, done uh, some sort of a miracle over the, the last 12 months. We brought it from just, you know, uh, an idea to a working uh, product. Yeah. Were you guys just super interested in autonomous vehicles? You can imagine. Right? Yeah. yeah. That, you've That's brought up so many incredible. good points. Are we going to lose car design? Uh, are designers not going to be needed because it doesn't matter what they're... I just realized, like, when you yeah. said, oh, it's got that huge bubble on when the top, you said I don't Airstream. care if it drives me. Yeah, when if you If it said drives Airstream. me, I don't care. Yeah, Airstream would be perfect. By the way, Jaybird and Digital Phil came up with a great name for their car together. They, they wound up, they're in our Slack chat. Yeah. It, what do you think it is? No idea. Kit. And it would be perfect for me because my name is Michael. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Kit. Kit. You Kit. don't know Kit? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow. All right, well, Kit was uh, a car in a TV show in the 80s. Oh, it, it was... Uh, Michael Knight. Yeah, was, yeah, 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 of yeah. course. Like Knight the, Raider. The, the, this, this, it was uh, a Pontiac. black, black yeah, uh, the Pontiac. black car, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. last question for you, because we got to go to the stands. They're standing by, waiting. <laughs> We're going to go right to them. When are you going to start giving us flying cars? you got the sensors. You can do it. Come on. First, like, let's get the driving right. <laughs> then we'll think about flying. All right, how about uh, sounds good? I get it. <laughs> I get it. He's like 20, 25. 20, yeah, 20, yeah. I can live with that. It's too. always, you know, five to ten years. You know what, you're right. I don't want always. to own a car. I mean, I like the idea of leasing, so renting is even better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just make it affordable. I love it. Uh, working on it. Yeah, it's but, on So him. the stocks <laughs> that you should buy are like Enterprise and Uber and stuff like that because they're all going to, and Lyft, uh -huh. they're all going to move. The stocks you should sell are like Volvo, uh, all these car companies that aren't working on this technology. Bye. And then um, probably sell your car now. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll go now live to the Sands. For a lot more fun on your live continuing coverage of CES 2017, this was an awesome and very informative interview. Jason, take it away. Be terrific. Official coverage of CES 2017.